So recently, I rounded up my favorite Android launches in 2019, and I asked you fine folk out there for your own personal recommendations of new stuff that I can try out. And you lovely bunch of beautiful bastards suggested so much great stuff that I've been absolutely swamped. I literally haven't had time to wash my hair or go to the lavvy or anything. I've just been testing out these brilliant launchers. And here is a selection of some of the best ones that you can download right now from Google Play. Oh, and before I forget, a few of you who watched my best Android customization apps video were asking if I really did murder my neighbor's dog and bury it in the garden. <laughs> no, of course I didn't. I'm a very busy guy. Why would I waste valuable time digging a shallow grave when I live next to a perfectly good quarry? <laughs> So first up, my favorite of the new launchers that I tested out was definitely CPL, which stands for Customized Pixel Launcher. Customized spelled wrongly with a Z because, you know, America. As the name kind of hints, this launcher offers a stock Android look and feel in its default state. But dive underneath that surface and you'll find that you can tweak, fiddle and poke around to your heart's content. Pretty much every feature found in CPL can be adjusted to some degree, with a mind-boggling array of toggles and sliders on offer. And you can cull any bits that you're not really a fan of, like that bulky search bar or the at-a-glance widget. Like with Nova Launcher, you can play around with the color and opacity of visual elements, try out different transitions and animations, add gesture shortcuts to fast access your notifications and settings, and bugger tons of other bits. And anyone worried about privacy can even add fingerprint identification to any sensitive apps that they don't want other people snooping about in. CPL Launcher is completely free to download and use to your heart's content. You don't have to unlock any premium features or anything like that. But if you want, you can throw a donation at the devs if you really like it. Now, any fans of the now sadly dead in the dirt Windows Phone OS will definitely get a kick out of Launcher 10, which directly copies the old tile based design, but now with added customization sexiness. As well as resizing and rearranging your app shortcuts, you can change up their colors and transparency levels, edit those icons and labels, and plenty more besides. You can also add as many desktops as you like, or simply stick with one scroll and effort just like back in the day. You've got full widget support, plus handy app shortcuts if you long press on an app as well. And you can activate live tile functionality with a small donation to the devs, so you can see a slideshow on your photos tile, upcoming events on your calendar tile, stuff like that. Unfortunately, I have noticed a few little glitches with Launcher 10 here and there, the worst offender being all of my tiles just suddenly disappearing with bugger or warner, but usually sleep in the phone and then waking it back up again sorts it out. And thankfully, there is a backup and restore feature as well, just in case things go really tits up. Alternatively, you get a very similar tile-based UI from the rather rubbishly titled Square Home 3-Launcher colon Windows style. Type all of that guffins into Google Play and you'll be rewarded with this. You once again have full live tile support, and I found that organizing your desktops was much easier with Square compared with the Launcher 10, which can be a little bit fiddly. While you can still fully customize each tile, including picking images from your phone storage to use as icons. You can even individually pick the rotation settings and volumes for each app when launched. Nice stuff. And for something really streamlined, definitely take a gander at Before Launcher. The idea is kind of similar to things like Niagara, where basically it's a nice streamlined interface, gives you fast access to all of your important apps while removing all the others from sites or limited distractions. The top limit on the number of apps you can place on your home screen is just eight, although your other apps are just a swipe away if you really need them. The setup is ideal for anyone who has trouble staying focused, filtering notifications from non-important apps to a separate menu so you aren't troubled by them while you're busy, but at the same time you don't feel like you're missing out. Before launch, it definitely isn't one for personalization lovers though, with just a couple of customization options on board. For instance, you can tweak your background color, and that's pretty much your whack. But if you find yourself craving a simpler way of life, then definitely give it a chance. Of a similar ilk is Slim Launcher, which is even more limiting than before. This time, you can only add shortcuts to seven apps at most, and there is no way to access the others without removing some of the seven originals. Although the dev has at least thrown in a pair of buttons to launch the camera and dialer, so you don't have to worry about those. Unfortunately, Sim Launcher doesn't have any customized notification setup or anything clever like that, but you can completely disable the status bar entirely if you want absolute peace and quiet. So at least there's that. So that right there is my roundup of the favorite new Android launches that you find folk out there recommended. Definitely, if you've got any more recommendations that I haven't covered yet, smash them down in the comments below. Go check out my other two videos on the best Android launches right now for more recommendations if none of those particularly flutters your boards. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone, love you!